Rub up your engines! Johnny Five says, what value will the 2014 Kia Octima be worth after replacing the motor with the new motor? Here's the problem. You say with a new motor. You can't buy a new Kia motor. None of those companies sell new motors. Most guys are putting a used engine in it. Pot luck. I could never tell you if it's even going to last. If you put a remanufactured engine in, depends who remanufactured it, what kind of a job they did. There's really good motor rebuilders out there and there's really crappy ones. And you never know what you're going to get. That's why if you're thinking maybe you got a blown engine, you want to put an engine in and then sell it, put a rebuild engine going to cost so much money it'll be more than a vehicle's worth. Most guys in that case cross their fingers, go to a junkyard, have a junkyard engine installed and then sell it. Hope it runs good enough that they can sell it for whatever they can get. Because you can't buy a new engine and it's all kind of guesswork and potluck anyway. If you're thinking you're going to fix it and sell it, my advice is if you can get a junkyard, I've seen people get junkyard engines installed, bought and installed for like a thousand bucks for those things, labor and parts, and it's worth a gamble you're going to get more than that for the vehicle. But if it's more than that, it's not worth it. You'll put more money in you'll ever get selling it. Maximum Decimus Meridius says, buy American to reinvest your money in our economy instead of another country. Well, here's the problem. A lot of the stuff that supposedly American comes from other countries and put together here, and there's a problem with our capitalist economy. If you support crappy products just because they're made in the United States, you're supplying a corporation with the idea we can make crap, they'll buy anything. That's how the Japanese got in so big in the United States making cars. They made cars that didn't break down. People started buying them now they have the market of cars in the United States. You got to go for quality. So it's kind of standing on a fence. Now I mean Toyotas, Hondas, lots of them are made here in the United States. American jobs. They're not stupid companies. They know if they imported everything eventually there'd be a tariff on it. But if they're built here, especially Toyota and Honda, they have plants all over the world in different countries. No one's ever going to whine about, oh, we're going to put a tax on them because they are made there. Kind of hilariously enough, in England, you could buy a Honda that's made there. A lot of the Triumph motorcycles are made in Thailand. So if you're buying an English, in quotes, Triumph motorcycle that's twin cylinder comes from Thailand, and you have to pay the import tax from Thailand, even though it's technically a British made motorcycle. It's actually made in Thailand. So you got to take all that in consideration. Nothing is as simple as it seems. You got to dig into the whole scenario, then decide you want to buy crap and support crap, or you want to buy good and where is it made exactly? You got to do a lot of research these days. Autumn Clark says, I got a 2540i in limp mode. Limp mode means the computer has found a relatively serious problem and it goes into limp mode that will only go so fast, shift into so much gears. You have some type of serious problem. You got to find a guy like me that knows BMWs as a BMW scan tool to analyze the data. It could be anything from bad ignition coils, weak fuel pump, computer failure, wiring failure. There are a zillion things it could be. It is a BMW 2000. The analytics on it are quite well designed if you mechanic is a fancy scan tool that can analyze what it says. This isn't just some stupid little scan tool you buy for a hundred bucks and plug it in that does the OBD2 trouble codes. No. It's one that does all the enhanced data. It costs thousands and thousands of dollars. That's what you got to pay a mechanic for that. And that's the big reason I tell people not to buy BMWs. Guys that work on them generally charge a fortune to work on them. I'm one of the few that doesn't. They got to pay so much money for their equipment. They're going to ram it to you when they fix the cars because they got to pay for the equipment, the training, and the expensive parts that go on BMW. So you want to save money. Don't ever buy a BMW, but you're going to have to visit a guy at least. Ask them what their diagnosis fee is, and then you pay that and see what they say. And you can always email me with the information. I can give you my take on it. Medic 60 Flat says, I got a 2013 Infiniti G37 X Coupe, 20,000 miles. What should I know? Thanks. Infinities are very expensive to repair as they get old and break down. If that's really eight years old, it really only has 20,000 miles, it's still got tons of life in it. You don't have anything to worry about. The Infinities generally don't start falling apart. They get 100, 120, 140 thousand miles. It's still got a lot of life in it. Change the oil regularly, maintain the car, but with that small amount of mileage, if that's the actual mileage, if you're the original owner, yeah, you know it is. In which case, you got a lot more life left in that Infinity. So I tell people, if you don't put that many miles on a car, go ahead and buy a luxury Infinity because it doesn't wear out until the mileage. It's not the age, it's the mileage. And if you don't drive much, what the heck, go ahead and buy one. Why?
Ron Torado says, Scotty, what do you think about Datsun pickups? I have a Datsun pickup, 1989 Mexico version, 1.8 liter engine. We use until the wheels fall off. Yeah, the old Datsun pickups, they were insane small little pickup trucks. They were just like the old Toyota pickup trucks. They could run a really long time. And I'm sure in Mexico, you probably got a standard transmission that can run forever. Less complexity. Sure, they're not humongous. You can't haul a lot, but you could drive those things for ever. They were really well made. As far as I'm concerned, they had better vehicles when they called themselves Datsun than when they called themselves Nissan. And then, of course, 2000 Renault bought out Nissan. And you never know what you're getting anymore. But back in the day, the Datsuns, they were great vehicles. And there's still some of them around. You can fix them up. 18 Wasco says, I got an 05 Silver out of 4.8. When I turn on, only in the morning, a cold start, it shows low oil pressure. I have to turn it off and turn it back on until the pressure goes back to normal. What you want to do is first just change your oil pressure sending unit. When they're old, they often read wrong. And I mean, if you start your engine up and says low, you turn it off and start it up again. It doesn't change much to the engine, but if the unit isn't working right, then it'll read. So just change that. They'll probably fix the whole thing. As long as the engine isn't clanking or cranking, then it's actually got the right oil pressure. If you really have low oil pressure, then when it is, you'll hear the engine clank, 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 because the oil isn't lubricating. You can always tell whether it's real or not. A lot of people are driving the oil lights on. The engine sounds totally normal. It runs perfectly fine. It's just it's reading wrong. It's not that there's low oil pressure because real oil pressure your engine won't have enough to reach the top and the top will clang like mad. Randy Ramirez says the 6,000 miles too many miles for full synthetic motor oil for an 09 2.4 liter Honda Accord. I knew mostly highway driving and go anywhere from 12 to 15,000 miles a year. 6,000 is perfectly fine. Here's what you understand. Highway miles is like 10% of city miles. Now I wouldn't go you know 60,000 miles and change your oil. That'd be kind of silly. But 6,000 is perfectly fine especially if you're doing a lot of highway mileage. And if you're using the full synthetic oil you can change it every 6,000 miles anyways. It's a good oil. If you're using conventional oil, I'd say never push it more than five. But with the synthetic, yeah, you can even go a little further if you wanted to. But oil's cheap, engines aren't, so you're better sooner than later. 6,000 is perfectly fine the way you're driving. Byron Ambo says, winter tire pressure recommendations. You should have the same tire pressure in your tires in the winter as in the summer. You got to check them. And you got to check them when they're cold. Because when it's cold outside, the tires get colder, the pressure goes down, pure physics. The colder the temperature, the lower the pressure. So morning, if it's it's 15 degrees outside, get an electric air pump, check your tire pressures. If you put in 30, put in 30 now when it's cold. Later when it warms up outside, months later or weeks later, whatever, then you got to check them again. Because let's say if you live in some squirrely place like I used to in Houston where maybe once in a while I get down to 30, but most of the time it was 70 or 80. You do them at 30, but then when it's 70 or 80 in the morning, you got to check them again because they might have too much pressure. You have to let some out. We're always putting air in and taking air out in a place like Houston. So. But you do want to check it ice cold. Cold. Same normal tire pressure, but you're going to find it's a lot lower if you never touched them because as they get cold, you got to raise the pressure on them. James Huff says, Scotty, what's a good de icer windshield and cleaner for the reservoir used in winter? Well, you just basically want the ones that go the coldest is where you're going. Don't buy the ones they used to sell in Houston. And I just laughed my butt off. It would say, windshields quarter fluid, 32 degrees. Well, of course, 32 degrees is the freezing temperature of water, so it doesn't do any good at all. So you want to get one that's got the temperature where you live. And of course, if you've been using water or the cheap stuff, you got to empty the container out and then fill it up with the new stuff to whatever temperature you live in to put in. They all work quite well. As for cleaning the windshields, I find the Rain-X brand works quite well. So I would buy the Rain-X brand. It's the lowest temperature lower than where you live. Now, if you live in Hawaii, it doesn't matter. It never freezes. So you can use any of them. Jonathan Negret says, Scotty, I want to learn how to fix carburetors, but I don't know how. All right, well, get in a time machine, go back in time, and then you can learn because they were all carburetors. Now nothing's carbureted unless you live in some oddball place or unless you got a chainsaw or something like that. Carburetors are actually relatively simple. You can get a carburetor repair kit that has all the parts. You can watch videos online. If you get into the finale of carburetors, when you would have a four barrel carburetor that had computer controls, no, those are very complex. They only made those for a few years. They all can be done if you want, but you know, the problem is since they're so old, when I get customers that bring me say like a, you know, 65 Chevy or something, the carburetor's generally rusted solid, and I just tell them, throw the stupid thing away. We'll bolt a four barrel Edelbrock. Because you can go to places like AutoZone, most of them even have them in stock, and you can bolt them on those cars. And with a minor modification of the throttle assembly, where the cable pulls it, you can get them, crank them up, and away they go. They're very well made, those Edelbrock carburetors. In most cases, you wouldn't even bother rebuilding them, you just throw them away and buy another one. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.